Hey guys, I uh, wanted to briefly talk to you about uh, something that I acquired today. Uh, 1998 Rick uh, Rickenbacker uh, 4003, 1998. From Guitar Center used, obviously, 1998 used. Clipping pretty bad there. So anyway, um, got a few issues with it that I need to delve into. I just wanted to briefly uh, explain it to you right now. That's the front pickup right there. Um, it seems like with Guitar Center, they just take you stuff in, put a hang tag on it, stick it on the rack, and sell it to somebody, and you get what you get. It's not like they go through it and make sure that everything's working. Because I got some issues with this one. That's both pickups. Here's the front pickup. It actually sounds pretty good for a front pickup. Usually the modern ones sound real dead. Like no tone. It has some tone to it. Both pickups. Doesn't quite sound um, bright enough. Bridge pickup. So, um, but the one thing I noticed about this, okay, I got the um, tone all the way up on the bridge pickup. Tone off, it does sound like. I am hearing some difference. I'm hearing slight difference, but it's not nearly where it should be sure if it's this pot or the tone pot because it's volume could just be this pot's really dirty volume pot but that still doesn't that should be a lot brighter other issue is what's pretty obvious on a lot of these bases is that a bridge is pulling up back here so you may have to replace the bridge or something. I mean, it seems to play fine. The action's pretty good. I might drop it a little bit for... A... Can't really funk on it really well. It's like, this thing must have just been sitting around for a long time under, or leaning up against a wall or something. Anyway, I'm going to get into it and see if I can find out what's going on with this. What's that pickup? That one actually sounds probably like this. Sounds normal. Put the, ball, the tone down on that one. Tone back up. Yeah, I think that's... But the bridge pickup... It's just dirty pots. Could be a connection in there. But I'm going to take it apart and see what's going on with it. Anyway. You don't see any stars, do you? Hopefully not. I don't want to be the star man. Star man! I'm a star man. No, I don't want to be the star man. Anyway, I'll get back with you. Bye. All right, I'm back. So I did fix it. It was just uh, dirty pots. I pulled the, uh, if I can remember, I'll put a picture up of the inside of the um, control cavity. It was really corroded in there. So I brushed things off, cleaned things up a little bit, put some uh, hot cleaner, electronic cleaner, whatever that stuff is in there and I cleaned it up. So here's the, uh, the bridge.
both pickups. Pretty good snap to it. Both pickups. Uh, bridge pickup. Clipping. Clipping. Ricky 4003. So I had a, a new one at 2022 uh, with the changes. It had the uh, not lacquer on the fretboard, which I do like. The different bridge. What's the 22 have? And it um, has only one truss rod, which I thought was kind of funky because it didn't give you a lot of room to adjust the truss rod. It was only one truss rod instead of two, like these are. And it, I'm not sure, but it seemed like they, when they went to one truss rod, rod, they added more meat to the neck. It seemed fatter than this one. This one doesn't seem bad. The other one seemed a little bit fat. So I wonder if they put more wood on the neck and took away a truss rod. I wonder if they did something like that. It's a cost cutting measure. Like this one has two truss rods. It has a little bit thinner neck than that one I had a few days ago. So I could have sworn it seemed like they put more meat on the neck, more wood, and took away one of the truss rods. So maybe that was an attempt to uh, shore up the neck with more of a fatter neck, one truss rod, instead of a little bit thinner neck, two truss rods. So I just have this flat over there. I would normally beef it up a little bit more, get a little bit more punch out of it. And I think it'll, I think it'll punch up really nice. Uh, one thing I was gonna mention that the guy who had a person, girl, could have been guy, could have been a he or a she or a him or an it, but they put these little press-on stars onto this front. You can see where they had stars. Do -do 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 -do. Little stars and little circles, you know. And then I guess they took it off at one point, but it made an impression on the finish. You can't really see it. Can't really see the little star impressions. But I can if I look real close, it's not a big deal. There's a couple up here. So, kind of worn to the finish. There you can see it. See on the headstock? We got a, almost looks like they tried to, somebody tried to buff it down or something. Did a little worn buffet on it. It's one right there. And there's one up here. If you can see the little star impressions. Looks like somebody tried to buff them out. So, I guess you could. You could probably, um, Take the clear coat off, smooth everything down, maybe then re, re clear coat it or repaint the front, but I, I wouldn't do that. So too much cost and expense. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think of this bass. It's a 98. I'd like to get the action a little bit lower. It's fine the way it is, but 
just like a little bit low. Let me know what you guys think. Both pickups. Look like they uh, filed the frets down, but they didn't crown them. It doesn't look like a rounded crown. Plays fine. Looks like this. somebody did file it. They don't really look polished. They look just filed down. File the frets down. And there's either grime in there or it's going, it's wearing through the uh, clear coat. But it is a 98. It's 24 years old. But it's gotten some play over those years. It hasn't been sitting in a clo closet totally, but maybe they just never cleaned it. So, but now I cleaned it up. By the way, the 98s don't have a push-pull. None of that, so I'm okay with it. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think of the Rickenbacker 4003 1998 Jet Glow. Jet Glow, Mr. Starman. I don't know how to give this guy a name. He's the star man. Maybe he could be the star man. I don't know. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Bye. Here's a little uh, added extra thing here I found. Let me bring this over here. You know, I use this for my guitar when I go direct. It's this little direct box. I use my, my effects pedal, and then I go into that thing. And then I go out of that directly into the board, and it sounds great for your guitar. And I tried it out for the bass; it sounds great. This is a um, maybe you've seen them before. It's called a quilter, quilter, phantom block. It's like a direct box quilter, phantom block. It's just got a master tone gain and a tone knob. And I put the bass through it. It sounds really good. Let me see if I can get it to stay, stay. Here's both pickups. It's got a little clipping going on. Clipping. Clipping. I love the clipping. Pickups clipping away sounds pretty good. Just this little box going directly into the um, interface. Let's see if I flip this switch. This is FR, FR, whatever that stands for. And then this other one's a cabinet simul simulator. This is a cabinet simulator. Sounds pretty good. Bridge pickup. Master tone and gain. Let's put the tone all the way up. That's the tone all the way up on the bridge pickup. Now running that through an amp would sound real good too. But I mean, going direct for your recording. I'd share that with you the quilter phantom block it's got a master tone 
and a gain, and it's got a couple of switches, and it runs, you know, either with a 9 volt or through um, phantom power. Makes it come alive, definitely. I'm going to try and keep this thing on it. I usually always take them off, but I'm going to try and work around it. Let's see what happens. It's kind of good for resting your hand on it for... Okay, anyway, let me know what you guys think.